Hi, my name is Cameron Miller. I'm here in a very special place called the Birdhouse Community Garden. We're located on the traditional homelands of the Tongva people in a place that we now call Los Angeles. We're the first urban ecosystem restoration camp in the world and we're very proud to be stewarding this land and these gardens here behind us. So it's noon here in Los Angeles on the 28th of January. It's 71 degrees and we're enjoying the sunshine here and in the, the beautiful winter stage of the garden. So there's lots of green ground cover that's coming up, but a lot of the deciduous fruit trees are still in that skeletal winter dormant stage. So it's a fun time to be here in the garden. Let me go show you what it's all about. At this time of year, the sun's pretty low in the sky. There's a lot of shade in the garden, but the sun's peeking through and it's showing this beautiful kind of skeletal silhouette of the winter garden here. We're here in a garden that is designed for maximum biodiversity, to make those soils rich in microbes, and to be able to receive and hold water that falls from the sky, and that we reuse as gray water from the two residential buildings on this property. So this is one of 24 different emitter sites uh, for gray water. We had the system installed by the Gray Water Corps, a great company, contracting company here in Los Angeles. It's so important that we be considerate of our water use because we're importing water from a lot of places. So when we're using municipal water like this, this comes from a city source, we want to get a couple of uses out of it before we say goodbye to it. So this is one of two rain tanks that we have on the property. This one is 600 gallons. Um, so this is receiving water off the rooftops of this whole building. So there's four units in this building, quite a lot of surface area on the roofs. And otherwise that water might just be wasted, but instead we capture it in this tank. And then we have a spigot down here. We can open that up and we use this to irrigate the crops that we're growing. We use this for making compost tea. We especially like to use this when we're um, watering our new seedlings and transplants. Baby plants really love this stuff. So as I mentioned, we cultivate plants in this garden for many reasons, for, for food, for fuel, for medicine, and for fiber. And when I say medicine, I'm referring to plant medicine like this. This is a holy basil. Our clove type holy basil it has a delicious clove taste, spicy, it makes a really nice tea. And we have a dedicated group of people here called our Community Apothecary Program. And they use a lot of the plants that we grow to make teas, to make salves, to make bath salts and scrubs, to make electuaries with honey, um, hydrosols, a lot of wonderful products. But plant medicine is an important part of what we do here and there's some gorgeous plants that we use in those applications. So we're here on the southern side of the property um, in an area that we keep open for vegetable growing in particular. So much of this place we've got a little canopy enclosing from all the fruit trees that we have planted here. But this area we like to leave open um, in order to grow vegetables because vegetables are such a good return on investment of the time that you put in, in terms of the calories that you can get out in the short term. So this bed over here we've got a bunch of Japanese red mustard, we've got a few different types of lettuces, we've got some spinach, we've got beets, we've got a small patch of carrots and green onions and some broccoli rob over there as well. So this bamboo arch here we created as a kind of a jasmine love tunnel. We've got a, two pink jasmine plants, one on that corner and one on this corner. This thing is so fragrant. When this is in full bloom, you can easily smell it from up on the street there. But it's incredibly fragrant and beautiful. This section over here is a bed dedicated to culinary and more of the medicinal herbs. We have some nice little plant signs that a group of our members got together and did some tests to figure out a nice type of signage. So we're reusing these bricks from uh, a neighbor's patio who wanted to get rid of them. 
we took them, always looking for a way to reuse materials from the neighborhood. And we came up with this for little plant signs for our culinary and medicinal herbs. One of the plants I want to feature today is this beautiful native elderberry. Elderberries are typically a plant that's found in riparian areas, so around streams and rivers. And you think, what, what the heck is that doing up here? We're in the foothills of the Santa Monica Mountains. Well, in fact, Beechwood Canyon, there used to be a large stream running down where Beechwood Drive is now. So there's natural wild specimens around here, but we also plant them here. Uh, so that we can harvest from them and know that we're not taking too much from the wildlife who relies on them. This plant was given to us by our friend, um, a man who's uh, of the Tongva people. His name's Lasaro Arvisu Jr., a wonderful educator and our cultural advisor. And he has taught us many things about this plant and its uses. We've made, you can make flutes from it, you can make percussion instruments called clap sticks, you can make fire blowers. There's a really thick pith layer in the center of this and you can hollow it out and you can use it as a tube for storage. There's so many uses to this plant. So this plant is called a Spice Z Nectoplum. So it's in the genus Prunus, like all of our plums and apricots and peaches. And those things have been crossed and back crossed and bred together many times and we have this wonderful stone fruit, the Nectar Plum. We harvest these in the summer, usually in late June or early July, but they're so sweet and they taste like vanilla and spice and they're just wonderful. And just starting to have some blooms come out here, these wonderful little pink blossoms. And this tree was planted in conjunction with a partner of ours, an organization called the Hollywood Orchard, also based here in Beechwood Canyon. And they plant and maintain and harvest fruit trees that are all throughout this canyon. They make products with those, they distribute them amongst the community, and then they give a lot of that fruit away to um, homeless shelters and after school programs. So we're very happy to work with the Hollywood Orchard and to have this tree that we planted with them here at the Birdhouse site. This plant here, this beautiful tall grass, is called vetiver grass. Vetiver grass is from India. These things have incredibly deep root systems. These roots are really useful for holding a hillside together. If you can imagine, you know, those deep fibrous roots reaching down into that hillside and just holding it in place there. It can stop sediment and soil from eroding and, and coming off of those hillsides and it'll It'll catch that stuff behind it and then eventually build a natural terrace. This vetiver grass is easy to propagate by root divisions. So we got these plants initially, I bought them from a man named Connor Jones in Ojai, California. He's a permaculture instructor out there. And we have since, we bought three plants from him in 2018 and now we have over a hundred of them. We just divided up during the winter, you separate out little segments and you can replant those elsewhere and they'll establish as new plants. So that's another activity we did during Arts and Ecology Day. Arts and Ecology Day is one of my favorite things that the Birdhouse offers to our community where we bring in our members for no cost to come in and, and join for um, a few hours of learning and some working, getting your hands dirty in the garden. Um, and then we have another group that leads an art activity up on our terrace. And then the group who is in the garden goes up to do the art and the people who are doing the art activity come into the garden. So there's this beautiful interchange um, that we hope serves to reinforce uh, the commonalities between arts and ecology and kind of build it into your muscle memory, the idea of like creating beautiful representations of your experience with nature but also getting in and learning technical details about how plants grow, how ecosystem functions. So that intersection of arts and ecology there is really at the heart of what the birdhouse is all about.